Welcome all to our graduation for the class of 2020. Graduation is an opportunity for a community to come together to celebrate the achievements of our senior students. Wish them well in their futures and celebrate our school. Although we are not together in the physical sense, our virtual graduation this year is very much designed to generate a sense of community. W.B. Yeats wrote, all things hang like a drop of dew upon a blade of grass. The context in which we have been living for the last three months has provided us with space and perspective for reflection. For me, the past three months have been a stark reminder of the fragility of the world we live in. Graduates, you will not be surprised to know that this has brought me back to my two favorite topics, a culture of care and the importance of legacy. Thankfully, in the context of this graduation, I cannot hear you groaning right now at the thought of another lecture. Regardless, and for one last time, I will endeavor to connect these themes to our current lives and to this evening's graduation. Some of you will know that I have a somewhat unhealthy fascination with the sport of rugby, and in particular, New Zealand rugby, or as they are more commonly known, the All Blacks. Arguably the most successful sporting franchise in the world. But what interests me most is what makes them so good beyond having great rugby players. The All Blacks promote a culture of care and regularly reflect on the importance of legacy. They are shaped by values such as respect, commitment and humility. Why? Because they believe that these values make better people and better people will make better All Blacks. In the midst of the challenges the world faces today, we see examples of kindness and care all around us. This pandemic in some ways has provided us with a sense of shared compassion and unity that perhaps was not as obvious or as widespread even just six months ago. In Naples, there are people putting solidarity baskets on the streets to help those in need, with the tagline, put in if you can, take out if you can't. Captain Tom Moore in the UK at 100 years of age, walking up and down his garden in support of health workers and somehow managing to raise over 30 million pounds. Closer to home, we have ISB students and faculty distributing face masks to care homes, designing and producing PPE equipment for frontline workers, baking muffins for the homeless and helping elderly people with such needs as their grocery shopping. These acts may be more visible today, but they are there because as a race, we have the potential to be kind. It is an inherent characteristic that we share, and when we act on it, we all benefit. Graduate, graduating seniors all over the world are also playing their part. You have given up many experiences. A graduation ceremony on our campus, a prom, spirit week, your senior prank. I never thought I would say this, but I think I miss prank week. There is no getting away from the fact that this has been a disappointing time for you. Your faculty and staff share that disappointment. These are experiences and celebrations that we look forward to every year. However, and with all sincerity, I hope that you also feel a sense of pride in what you have contributed to your community by playing your part. It cannot replace the loss that you may feel, but it can give you much needed perspective. As this is also my last year at ISB, maintaining such a perspective has been, and continues to be, of vital importance to me at this time. I have always been convinced that our well-being and happiness is dependent on our ability to maintain a positive perspective in our lives. As this is my last formal address to the school community, I wish to take a little time to recognize some people. Firstly, I want to recognize a retiree from the high school. Colette Shoon has been at ISB for 24 years. She held the roles of general office manager and high school administrative specialist. Colette has also given tirely, tirelessly to our service learning program through her involvement in many projects and leading such wonderful student learning experiences as the annual Togo service trips. A sense of service is what defines Colette, and she has given our community so much. Thank you, Colette, and we wish you well in your retirement. To the faculty and staff I have worked with over the last 11 years, your genuine care for our students and our school shines through in everything you do. The challenges of the past months have been immense for you, and you have risen to meet these challenges in service of our school. My sincerest gratitude. It has truly been an honor to be part of this faculty. Finally, to the students, and by default their parents, ISB is a great school, 
as you are the largest group walking around from day to day, your impact and your behaviours play the largest role in shaping the culture of our school. You are to be congratulated for how you have shaped your school to be the community it is. So this brings me back to legacy. I believe that many make the mistake of looking at legacy as some far reaching concept. I like to look at it differently. According to the Chinese proverb, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. If we look no further than each day and commit to trying our best to make a positive impact on those we encounter, then at the end of each day, we will have left behind a small but worthwhile legacy. It is these small, consistent steps of being the best person we can be that will define our legacy when we look back at our lives. We won't get it right every day, but if we try, we will get it right more often than not. We will be remembered mostly for our contributions, and our legacy will be defined by what we do each day. Graduates, my sincerest congratulations on your achievements and for reaching this significant milestone in your lives. As you move on, it is my hope that you will continuously find the time to reflect on your journey and the impact that you are having on others and the communities that you will become part of. I thank you sincerely for the manner in which you've handled yourselves in these trying times when you were faced with many disappointments and frustrations. In this context alone, you're already leaving behind a worthwhile legacy. Thank you very much. We're stopped in mid-flight. This is what a crisis is about. The upheaval of our love, family, student, professional, or social lives. With this collective and imposed paralysis, we have to face countless grieving processes. How to grieve over a much expected senior year and its celebrations. Like you, maybe, I did not expect to give up so much of my freedom. I did not expect for spring to be put under lockdown. I did not expect to be recording this speech for this incredibly important moment in your life. But if you think about it, were we really freer before? Were we more alive, more connected to our inner resources and more aligned with who we are? On the scale of our life, isn't it a shame to be smaller than who we're meant to be? We have all recently experienced how much context can drive our lives. Is it right to accept the limits that others put on you, which very often are their limits, not yours. And if you accept them, will you still feel adequate and joyful? As you're transitioning to a new stage in your life, will you dare open up to the full extent of your abilities and dreams Will you have the audacity to embrace your passions and grow your talents? On that journey, you will be confronted with fear. What will be your response then? Probably courage. Courage to create your own and unique path. Courage to break from old habits and give up of beliefs which have become irrelevant. Courage to stand in front of others who are doubtful about your choices or explicitly against them. Courage again to overcome the uncertainty, the lassitude, the lack of understanding and the fear of failure. Courage finally to spread your wings and fly your own skies freely. So, betray, transgress, explore unseen territories, not for the sake of transgressing in a rebellious way, but rather to emancipate yourself from the part of your legacy which prevents you from expressing your true nature. Cultivate your enthusiasm, feed your passions, 
Surround yourself with great, funny, and caring people. Reach for your desires and be true to who you are wholeheartedly. Your family, your friends, and ISB provided you with a launching pad composed of values, knowledge, challenge, and love. On your behalf, let me thank all of them, all the staff, faculty, and leadership of ISB. Under the current circumstances, I want to express an immense gratitude for what they have accomplished. They demonstrated professionalism, care, and courage. I also want to address a very special thank you to my dear colleagues on the board of ISB where I had the honor, the privilege, and the pleasure to serve for the last seven years and explore the path on which to advance our school together. With our daughter Itbish graduating today, our family is saying goodbye to a fantastic community. How will ISB grow in the future? An enthusiastic man, Mr. George Nadzi, the new chairman of the board, will lead our continuous efforts in designing the best version of ISB. Dear class of 2020, the doors of your life are wide open, just as ISB's doors will remain for you. Enjoy this very unique moment. Thank you. In all my years of teaching, I have never had two graduating classes that were identical. I am certain, though, that your graduating class is the most diverse, the most extreme, and the most unpredictable class I have had for a long time. Your graduating class has it all. The intellectuals, the scientists, the cynics, the rebels, the snobs, the artists, the optimists, and it goes on. From the very first classes with you, I was coming to school never knowing what I was going to have to deal with. It was like riding a Russian mountain roller coaster, but sitting backwards wearing blind blinders. Even now, I am not 
quite sure if I am relieved that you are finally done or if I am going to miss you terribly. I can tell you though that I was really excited when Miss Brown told me that I was going to be your graduation speaker and profoundly disappointed when I realized that I would not be able to look at you when I gave you my send off to the real world with words of wisdom. Well, we never know what life brings on, and that is why Hannah Arendt suggested to hope for the best, prepare for the worst, and deal with whatever comes your way. Very wise advice, I would say. However, I was reminded recently of something you do not want to have to deal with, especially when it has to do with human relationships. Regret. Beginning of March, I made a routine phone call to my parents to see how they were doing. My dad was just fine, but my mom had the same cold since beginning of February. I called a couple of days later to check on them, only to learn that my mom had developed pneumonia and was in worrisome shape. In the meanwhile, the Belgian state had imposed the confinement, all European borders were closed, and there was no way for me to get to my parents in case of emergency. At this moment, I realized that if something went wrong, I would have not told my parents enough how much they mean to me, how grateful I am for all they have done, and so many other things that I know how much it would have meant to them to hear. And at this moment, I was overcome with regret. You see, regret is related to our sense of who we are and who we want to, and who we want to be as well as how we fulfill our responsibilities and duties to others. In past graduation speeches, I talked about my life guiding question of who do I want to be when I'm 50, as well as the tools that would promote a good life worth living. But in both cases, I neglected to refer to an essential lifelong lesson. Never take anything for granted. The things we hold on, we hold on too dearly in our lives, are the ones that are consistent and reliable. And therefore, the ones we tend to consider will always be there. In other words, we take them for granted. But this is not how it works. Life is unpredictable, and the human condition can be modified in a blink of an eye by an accident, an unfortunate event, etc. And when it happens, it is already too late. How to not have regrets because of things you have taken for granted? Simple. Be yourselves and never let other people define you. Make your own choices and let the way you navigate your lives define who you are. And the first step in making good choices is to have a clear and unswerving knowledge of your limitations. What makes the difference between a life with or without regrets is not the power that you have, but the paths you have chosen to follow. And knowing your limitations will allow you to choose the right ones. After all, life is not complicated. It is our arrogance, greediness, and selfishness that turn our lives into a mess. One of my most favorite philosophies of life is Alice Roosevelt's. Fill what is empty, empty what is full, scratch where it itches. In other words, enjoy the present, have a purpose, and be of service to others. Apply this every day, and your lives will be simple, good, and without regrets. As my speech time, as my speech time was cut down as much as my salary is after taxes, meaning in half, I have to save the rest of my speech for when I see you again. I know that you think that it is unfair and that you are paying a very high price 
by missing your prom, your graduation ceremony, your trip, and I don't want to know what else. You are wrong. Life's most impressionable lessons are the ones where something bad happens to you or something challenging confronts you. Thanks to our current circumstances, you now know how injustice, injustice tastes, so you can already start acting on it and make choices accordingly. Combine this knowledge with your potential, your desire for change, your thirst for life, and make this world better. Your graduating class reminds me of Hannibal's out virum in venum out fasciam. I'll either find a way or make one. So no matter if you succeed or fail, keep going. And whenever you make a decision, small or big, keep in mind that a good life is a life without regrets. And a life without regrets is one where you never take anything for granted. Oh, I forgot to mention to you that my mom is now just fine. I call her every day and she tells me, as well as my dad, how to manage everything you can imagine. From folding my clothes to the colonization of Mars. And at the end of each and every discussion, I smile and say, Edaximana, okay, mom, I have no regrets. My dear students, I wish you the best. Thank you.
Good afternoon, seniors, parents, beloved teachers and friends. Thank you to Stage Clip for giving us this graduation ceremony and closing off this more than memorable year as One Direction would say, one way or another. You might not recognize me like this, so this is better. It came as a surprise and has been an honor, as well as the first thing to ever make my parents proud, to have been given the opportunity to represent this very special class of 2020. I've been notorious for being a headache to teachers, a bit of a distraction in class. In short, the sort of comedic relief a Friday afternoon needs. And perhaps this is one of the reasons I was chosen to write the speech, as the comedic relief to this year's IB unusual epilogue. I understand wanting to end this academic year on a bit of a funny note, because, let's face it, this whole year of 2020 has felt like a joke. About three months ago, we seniors left ISB not knowing it was perhaps the last time. At first, we took the surprise coronation as a well-deserved break, but as weeks turned into months, it dawned on us that ironically, this joke was very real. We wouldn't get our senior spring. In between two naps, I googled the definition of a joke, a thing that someone says to cause, to cause amusement or laughter, especially a story with a funny punchline. Now, if someone a year ago had told me I'd be waking up at noon, taking a nap at two, and going to sleep at 4 a.m. on the day of my biology exam, I know I would have laughed. This story has been our two years of IB, and in the end, the funny punchline was, hey, the teachers were right for once. It's not about the exams. It is about the learning process. As little as we want to keep on addressing it, this pandemic has been the defining event of this year, and I hope some other natural catastrophe won't feel the need to top it off. The graduating class of 2020 will be memorable for one thing, and it's for being the first class ever since the birth of ISB to never take any final exams and get about six months of summer vacation. Now, this brings me to the idea I'd like you to take away with you today. Be memorable. For two years, we seniors had been preparing with perhaps more complaining than studying for our final exams. That was the goal, to nail them, because we simply did not know better. The news of the cancellation of our exams was followed by a few days of denial, thinking, wow, all of this work really was for nothing, huh? However, it came to me that after all, now we were faced with something bigger, perhaps more daunting than these final exams, freedom. At this point in time, if our academic fate is in the hands of the IB, we might as well seize the opportunity to focus on other interests. During these few months of isolation, I've seen more than I ever had from a lot of my classmates. I waited in anticipation for Kalzang's new cooking adventures on Instagram for Jacob's latest comedy moment on TikTok. People were drawing, making music, building Legos, following online courses, and even becoming self-taught home decorators on Animal Crossing. But most importantly, these people were doing something that was true to them. We, class of 2020, have shown that we are more than just school, more than just these final IB exams. I think that at 18 years of age, it's difficult to realize that you won't ever be remembered for the grades you got in high school. The failures you'll encounter won't ever define who you are. Your life will only ever be what you make it to be, how you choose to give meaning to it. From the Big Bang to this day, through a chain of unplanned and coincidental reactions in the universe, we humans have come to inhabit Earth. Thanks to evolution and a lot of luck, human brains have developed enough to gain consciousness of ourselves and others around us. Developing complex relations, we were able to function as a society, most of the time, and from this, find a meaning to our own lives. We live for our goals, our happiness, and perhaps for others. So if on the scale of the universe, our mere existence is pointless, be memorable on a human scale. Be remembered in the human world for the unique things you did, your kindness, your intelligence, your empathy, or even for being exiled to Dr. Conan's office and forced to finish your IAs. Now, before you clap, I know you won't, I don't think I could leave the stage or this video recording really without doing one last memorable thing. Mr. Bolster, I don't know where he is, I thank you for finally giving me your blessing. 
Your approval truly means the world, especially since you know this means a great deal to me. Edvige, you've been my best friend for a solid amount of time now. Together, we've been through Miss Cross interrogations, police interrogations, and even curious 10th grader interrogations. I'd write you a song, but I don't know how to sing. Either way, I'm using this opportunity to do something I hope is making you smile. So, if no other boy has taken your heart by then, Edvige Clotilde Jacqueline Rousseau, yeah, I put those middle names in because they're funny. Will you go to prom with me next year? So, to my fellow class of 2020, find what you believe will make you memorable. Go out there and be remembered for something, however minor it seems. Through these years of education, we've all been given the tools and the power to change the world. So go change it, even if it's the world of a single person. Papa, maman, merci. Parents, friends, staff and administration, esteemed faculty, on behalf of ISB's class of 2020, I would like to welcome you all to this surreal graduation ceremony. I would like to start by thanking some people who despite this abrupt ending have been with us since the beginning. At ISB, we are very lucky to have such a dedicated group of people who beautifully maintain our school. To our amazing staff, thank you. To our parents who held our tiny hands the very first time we walked into kindergarten and have stood by our side since then, thank you. To our teachers, who always demonstrated extreme patience with us, who never ceased to encourage us, and who even prepared us for exams we never ended up taking. Thank you. I would also like to thank a lady who helps to run this high school like a queen. Ms. Brown is the cast coordinator and overviews the student leadership team, among many other things. Thank you, Ms. Brown. The next person I need to thank is a fixture of ISB. This woman has been here since 1991, and she will be retiring this year. As the assistant IB coordinator and registrar, she has been the backbone of the organization. I, of course, mean Ms. Shun. A heartfelt thank you. And finally, I would like to thank a person who has been at the core of the high school for 11 years. Thank you to the one and only Mr. Bolster, who is leaving us for Spain next year. We wish you all the best. My friends, this is it, the end of the beginning. Today should have been the pinnacle of our 12 years of schooling, our high school musical moment we've been robbed of a proper ending, left with the unbearable uncertainty of what our futures hold. But our class will not be defined by the void left this year. Our class will not be defined by this virus. We, ISB's class of 2020, will be remembered for the enthusiasm and energy we have displayed over the years. Our longing to go back on campus stems from what I believe is the very special atmosphere that we create at ISB. It's not school that we miss, it's our friends, our teachers, and our campus. But see, these individual factors do not depend on the school. We can see our friends and teachers outside of ISB, while following social distancing rules, of course. We'll even be welcomed back to campus one day. But none of that will ever be quite the same as spending a simple day at school. While writing this speech, I found myself glancing over at my school back, sitting there perfectly packed since March 9th. I realized that I couldn't talk about the class of 2020's past and future without addressing its present. Let's face it, standing at the finish line of this two-year marathon now feels anticlimactic. For us seniors, these last few months have felt like watching the light at the end of our tunnel slowly start to dim and then vanish completely. In the, myth, in the midst of being trapped at home, we slowly came to the realization that we wouldn't be coming back to school, taking your exams, or enjoying our well-deserved prom and graduation. Worst of all, we didn't realize that we'd never be in the same place altogether again. In times like these, when neither the present nor the future is promising, it's easy to reminisce about the past. We allow our minds to fool us into believing that life really was better before. This tends to happen every time life gets a little more challenging. If we look back at around October of last year, at the peak of our IB, we all envied the 10th graders and reminisced about how easy it was back in the day. And maybe in 10 years, we'll look back at this infamous period in our lives and long for our quarantine days. But adversity makes us stronger. Let's remember that you can't enjoy Fridays without Mondays. Let's focus on the present, acknowledge the past, 
and leave behind any preconceived ideas of what the future should be. I'd like to quote artist and philosopher Nicki Minaj, who once said, cherish these nights, cherish these people. Life is a movie, but there will never be a sequel. The average movie is around 90 minutes. If every year of our lives represents a minute of the movie, then we are only at minute 18. This is our one and only movie, where not only its lead actor, we're its director, screenplay, cameraman, and cinematographer. We have all the tools to succeed, and if we fail, we can always shoot the scene again. We can even try to shoot it from a different angle. But there comes a point where we have to move on, let the past be. Let's not run out of time focusing on a minor scene because we might miss out on the big picture. I'd like to end this speech by thanking one last group of people, to the class of 2020, to my classmates, to my friends. I'm so thankful for every single moment, day or night. You guys might be far from the eyes, but close to the heart. Anyways, 890 words just to say that, despite it all, we did it, and we did it together. Thank you.
Defne Akdal. Hamdan Al Suedi. Agat Alexandre. Tim Aman. Livia Anderson. Ben Askew. Francesco Baggi Cizini. Nor Beckers. Miriam Bente. Julie Billet. Charles Birdie. Sebastian Birdie. Andrew Blanky. Gabriel Blondo. Clara Brandt Rose. Barbara Buchan. Emma Vanell. Paola Bustamante. Victor Carmona. Jade Carpentier. Hayen Chung. Jack Connolly. Isabella Connors. Kirill Darenberg. Arnaud Dascal. Daphne de Gelder. Gabriel de Solage. Jacob Devlin. Timothée Dunham. Alexandra Di Vittorio. Maria Dixon. Julia Donato. Savina Emsons. Maya Feeney. Brenna Fertig. Peter G. Benluca Garica. Omer Geva. Julia Jill Silva Novis. Time and God. Jonathan Goodridge. Julian Gray. Raquel Gunnar's daughter. Philippine Hagelstein. Victoria Hallengren. Yurong He. Violette Edo. Luca Hutchings. Orgar Illa. Eldar Iskandarov. 
Mariam Iskanderova, Jana Ivy, Eugene Jang, Kiran Yavorchik, Emma Jenkinson. Bora Kaliagasi Isabella Kane Jan Karaman Shizuki Kawaguchi Minju Kim San Kim Juliet Kleinian Arissa Kodama Valentina Kotiranta Stephanie Kring Bo Hyun Kwan Orlan Lacroix Christian Lam Penelope Lazar Anna Nadesma Avira Juliette Lejeune Alexander Lemosberg Andrew Libby Jizu Lim Campbell Lombardi Peter Lotzma Isabella Lozano Sophia Lozano Comme Luciette Labrie Paul McGowan Jorin Josephine Grace McNaughton Laura Mays Vincenzo Malagori Juan Martin Gomez de Aguero Sean McCary Callum McDermott Lucy McMahon Marcha Mensink Seojin Min Yukari Mitsuta Amalia Mota Arthur Nagels Riku Narukawa Rory O'Flaherty Alexandra Oberle Ayumi Odaka Oliver Olson Micah Ono Marta Ora Julia Ertz 
Tyler Osterhout Carl Overstens Mikhail Pala Subin Park Andres Pazos Catherine Pepper Vivian Pereira Juliette Phelps Calypso Jalis Madeline Redman Helena Reed Thomas Renault Casper Rentenar Alice Ringelstetter Edwige Rousseau Ryan Russo Antonio Ruiz Senac William Ryland Pretoya Paroma Saha Katsang Sama Henri Sepulcre de Solière Julia Shukina Raffaele David Sherman Rebecca Siegtrigstotir Matthew Sinclair Benjamin Softich Alessandra Stankaitis Gudbjartur Steinarsson Magdi Talat Leno Telemons David Thorstensen Claudia Top Tom Trebus William Trimble Jacques Vaz Vivi Vallo Mathieu Vandevel Rose van den Ende Theo van der Mersen Romke van der Beem Isabel van Haverbeke Antonio Vergara Ruiz Ophelie Verhage de Neer Pauline Verstraten Leo Weber Yuto Yabuoka Hilal Yanai Gregory Yang Takaya Yoshida Tasha Zalk
Zürmen, Siegen. Baby! 
thanks to everybody involved in making today's graduation possible, to those who helped organize it over the past weeks, to those who performed and to those who spoke. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride and pleasure that I present to you the class of 2020. <laughs>